Hey, what is going on, you Ferrady Cat for alligators? I got a interesting deck to share with y'all today. It is a Roaring Moon build, but it is a Iron Hands Roaring Moon build. So this was like talked about as Paradox Rift was releasing the idea of playing Roaring Moon with Professor Sada's and the Iron Hands as well with some energy switches. Also, I do have the Thornton in here. We'll break down the whole list in just a second, uh, but it didn't really go anywhere at the beginning of the format. I didn't really see anyone playing it. I didn't try it out myself, but the other day on the stream, I ran to someone playing a Roaring Moon Iron Hands deck. And I was like, that's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it doesn't, like, I wasn't like uh, blown away by it. It didn't seem that good to me. And they had the water energy in there as well. And I have water energy in here in my build as well. So we can also attack with the Radiant Greninja. But I was like, let's try it out tomorrow. And that was today or yesterday when you're watching this video. And it was really good. And yeah, this deck seems really, really good. How good is it? I don't know. I didn't play that much with it. But I was kind of beating everything with it. It's kind of crazy. So it's a Roaring Moon build. We have the three Roaring Moon EX. Of course, you have the Squawk ability. The Mew EX for the pivot plus the draw power through the restart. And sealed cards on the Greninja getting energy into the discard pile. Plus draw power is sick. And then Moonlight Shuriken, we do play some water energy in here as well. And we got the Iron Hands in here. We're trying to set up Iron Hands. And there's a couple different ways we can set up the Greninja or the Iron Hands. But the main way we set them up is we put them on the bench and build up the energy on them through attachments and energy switch. We got four energy switch in the deck and i also have a Moltres v in here i just kind of threw this in there initially i wasn't sure if it would be that good but it's been really really good not only does it constantly keep energy in play through its ability uh we get to play four seal stone as well i got two four seal stones in this list one of the most powerful cards in the game right now a tool card that searches your deck for any one card can't go wrong with that of course right and it also combos really really well with the thornton because it constantly builds up energy on itself um, so it's always a good target to thornton into a different pokemon like the iron hands or the roaring moon could do the greninja as well the greninja we basically always get to the greninja's getting set up through just kind of energy switching to it of course so that's kind of the main way so i saw the pokemon really not that many pokemon i don't play the more peko uh, only the three of the roaring moon but we have attackers like the iron hands raining greninja and moltres plus the thorn to potentially recover another roaring moon if we need to I don't really need that force rune roaring moon that you usually play. The Morpeko is definitely something I, I would consider including in the deck as like a one prize attacker. Like if we go second against something like Charizard, we might still want to take a knockout on that first turn. And if they bench Manaphy or we can't get to the Greninja or the Iron Hands play, just getting the Morpeko for that one one prize knockout on their active Pokemon wouldn't be terrible. Uh, so I definitely like the idea of the Morpeko for that. So that'd be something to try out for sure. Of course, we have the four Professor Sodders in here, accelerate the energy to the Roaring Moons. And then we either attack with Warren Moons or we energy switch the energy off of there to our other attackers. One boss's orders and one Thorn are the only other supporters. And boss's orders is my only gust effect in this list, but I do play a pow pad and some pokey gears to help keep it in the deck and then consistently find it out of the deck when we need it because we're so aggressively carrying our opponent's active pokemon for two prize cards or using greninja to draw two prize cards we don't really need to gust very often or at all with this deck when i was playing games with the deck i was never really finding myself needing to be like oh my gosh i need to gust their pokemon this turn it's like i just need to knock out their active and i'm winning the game and as long as I was KOing their active, I was winning the game. It was pretty great. Uh, but one boss in here, I think you do need, you do want at least that one gust effect in here to work with. So have that in here. We have an escape rope as well and two switch cards for our switch cards. And the escape rope can kind of act as a board disruption card, you know, force up something off their bench instead of what's in their active uh, for a turn is nice. Let's get to the items. I've got a ton of items here. Four dark patch, of course, four battle VIP pass, four energy switch. Like I said, that's how we get to the iron hands and the Greninja, which are the most powerful attackers in the deck. Um, for sure, Roaring Moon is kind of secondary to them, and Moltres is kind of the worst attacker in the deck, but still pretty good. Also, we can attack with the Mew EX as well. Uh, before I forget, we can use it to copy stuff like the Gradient Greninja, Greninja attack. If we go up against like a Rapid Strike deck, we could copy the G-Max Rapid Flow. If we go up against Lost Tina, we could copy the Lost Impact, but Roaring Moon's Frenzied Gouging does pretty well against that anyways. But using Mew EX instead of the Frenzied Gouging means we won't get return knocked out so efficiently by like a Sableye or a Cramorant. So I do kind of like Mew EX as a go-to attacker up against the, the Lost Tina matchup for sure. For Earth and Vessel, finding our energy is super important. And speaking of energy right now, we do play a lot of energy. Six dark, three water, two lightning. At a certain point, I was just like, I kind of want more energy in the deck when I was at six, uh, six dark, two water, two lightning. And I was like, let's just go with another water because sometimes we prize one of the waters and we can't utilize Greninja. So let's just make our Greninja play more consistent. I might cut that back for another dark, but I definitely would play two lightning. We iron hands a lot. Prizing lightning energy would really, really suck. So definitely want to play the two lightning energy. I could see cutting back down to to water but i would probably play a seventh darks energy is super super important we want to always hit our energy attachments return we want to use concealed cards to draw cards and then we just want to build up a bunch of energy and play and get more in the discard pile through ultra balls or vessels so we can dark patch or sada or use the ability on moltres to accelerate more energy into play two pokey gear helps us find sada early and also helps us find the boss in the thorn in the late game 
mentioned the pal pad one heavy ball in here we got a lot of one ofs uh so we definitely want our heavy ball to make sure we can consistently utilize everything throughout the game to force you like i mentioned just one of the best cards in the game if we can utilize it get it in the deck why wouldn't we and for pokestop we're an aggressive deck for sure trying to see a lot of cards uh, as fast as possible and we got this many items and we search out basically almost all of our pokemon on our first turn of the game then we start to accelerate our energy out of the deck with the earth and vessels it's basically just items left in our deck pretty quickly so the pokestops are hitting us one two sometimes even three items in the early game mid game and late game is basically all items at that point or if we're hitting the supporters we probably also have the pal pad as well which you can just shuffle them right back into the deck yeah so this deck is sick it's way better than i thought it would be it's way smoother way more consistent um still gotta put some work in with it a couple things i still want to try out the main thing i want to try out is maybe try four trekking shoes over the pokey gears and then maybe cut back on the nest balls by one and then maybe cut an energy maybe cut that water to try out a four trekking shoe bit trekking shoes build over the pokey gears i did have luminian here at some point but the, our benches are consistently like full we almost always have greninja mew squawkabilly and moltres in play and then depending on the matchup we might have two roaring moon or one roaring moon and an iron hands in play we just don't really have, ever have room for luminium so i want the pokey gears over the luminium because of that in the late game the luminium was still really nice because towards the end of the game we'd have like our attacker set up and play they hit one of our attackers so we don't need to bench another attacker that turn and then we could put luminium in play to find boss find the sod to find the thorn to close out the game which is sick but really game mid game we really didn't ever have space for luminium so i cut the luminium and so far i have not missed it not yet but i definitely could still like i said haven't played that i played a decent amount i haven't played that many games to the deck and then three ultra ball three nest ball i'm sure looks a little bit weird but ultra balls really aren't that great towards the end of the game they're really nice to th thin out dead cards out of our hand but we do have the earth and vessel that can also do that um early game nest balls are definitely better getting our hand to be able to get m as many basic pokemon in play as possible is better than having to ultra ball away a bunch of resources to try and get our basic pokemon in play and then late game when we're getting iona to rock sand and we need to get that last roar and moon to close out the game or get the mu ex in play to draw some cards with the restart ultra balls kind of suck so yeah i haven't really missed the fourth ultra ball i don't really feel like i want more discarding in the deck i think if i did put the luminium back in the deck i would go back up to the fourth ultra ball but i cut the luminium and with that i also cut an ultra ball and i have not missed it yet feels pretty nice at the three ultra ball three nest ball and yeah that's the build before we jump into some action i will have some more gameplay with this deck so if you're really trying to refine your skills with this and see uh what i was able to pull off with the deck check out the secondary youtube channel azul gg2 more gameplay with this roaring moon iron hands deck and before we jump into the action right here right now i want to give a big, sh big shout out to tc evolution as always for sponsoring me and everything i do here on the youtube channel and with the live streams here and on twitch they make the highest quality uh damage counters dice ability markers and markers and poison and burn markers and everything like that everything you would need possibly for the pokemon tcgs they have the highest quality accessories and they just came out with their dice case for pre-order it looks super clean it's super slick has the uh the two-tone little border uh color around it which like, just looks super clean super super sick so go check out tcevolutions.com you can use, use code azulgg over there as well for a discount go pick yourself up some of the highest quality coolest products and accessories in the pokemon tcg space and with that said let's go ahead and let's jump into some action with uh with this might actually be pretty good roaring moon deck we just go for the we go for the hands right go for the threat of hands instead of hands and then moon moon and we could just go off that yeah i want moltres i want hands i want greninja but i can get the greninja off the nest ball off nest i could even go as far as going play this ultra ball away these two to get mu v now i could get mu v right now i do like that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it man i'm just gonna do it man the nuts give me the nuts yeah it's all right it's all right i've seen better i've seen better but the escape rope's nice i can send up the mute and i could dark patch i guess i should dark patch but i could still use multrace this turn possibly Hit him with a stop, hit him with a squawk, hit him with a stop, hit him with a squawk. Pretty good. Holy smokes, that's really good, actually. Um, Moltres, sealed cards with like energy and discard pile. This first, get rid of this. Get two. Dark. Even more dark in the deck. All the dark should just be in the discard pile, right? They're, the dark energy are most effective in the discard pile, <clears throat> I want to say. Honestly, I want to cut the Luminian. I want to I cut the Luminian. I want to cut Lummy. I don't like Lummy. The cringe card. Just mill my Luminian. I don't even care about it anymore. Damn it. That's pretty good, though. I like that. The 
the right one here. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know if the, the hands play is happening. How many should I have left? Just two. I think I just leave the energy as the energy, right? And just pass. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if the I mean, if, to get the hands play off this next turn, I need double E switch. I'm already down one E switch, which kind of sucks. Um. Yeah, I'm down to cut Luminian, I think. This, the bench space just never lines up for Luminian very well. Um, unless I just don't put this in play. But the pivot in play is so important, it feels like. Um, yeah. Should have done Moltres E-switch to hand early that turn. Did I have it? Actually, might be right bit. Might be right hail. Maybe I did have it. I actually, I think you are right. Did, did I have it? Yeah, I think I did have it. I think you're right. Oh, that sucks. That's really bad, actually. <laughs> That's really bad that I didn't do that then. That's really bad. I guess I'm just trolling then. We never play a third water, do we? Um. Do we ever play the third water? Cut a dark for a water? I don't think so. Dark in this card is so important to like use dark patch and use this. We could add more energy, I guess. Which I actually don't hate. Um. I actually kind of like the idea of that. I kind of like the idea of that. We might do that. We might do that. Getting double E-switch this turn is going to be tough, if not, like, impossible. It'll be very tough. Um, I could try and boss KO this, though. That's also a play now that's available to me. Just boss KO Rody. I wouldn't hate that. Finding the boss is going to be tough, though. DTE in here? No. I don't play the DTE. I don't hate the idea of adding the DTE. Um, I don't love it, either. DTE does not seem that good. There's one E-switch, though. We're closer to them now. <clears throat> I do need to get an energy for turn as well here, though, of course. They have a pretty good turn here, to be honest. Um, T, I don't know. DT is weird. You're never gonna. It's you're almost never gonna draw it. It getting milled by stop means it's just dead. If I go to two four seal stone, maybe though. If I go to and I might go to second four seal stone, to be honest. I might go to second four seal stone. Good man, if you good man, if you bench. I might play fifth e switch. There's nothing like e switch, right? Oh, Poppy, but yeah, I'm not playing Poppy. Chill out. Okay. Stop first or Sada? Sada? Well, no, 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 because this E switch is like here. Maybe I do just rip stop first. It's kind of like the same thing, though, right? Or if I hit it, then I might maybe change my sequencing. What's well, on the bottom of my deck? There's not that many items on the bottom of my deck, though. So I think I'm just going to rip stop first here. Oh my gosh! Yeah! That's incredible! <laughs> It's such a disgusting draw. It was two vessel. <laughs> Dude, that draw is disgusting. Holy shit. All right, so. Um, I don't know. Now I'm going to kind of get aggressive with this. Ninja the Manders, right? I play wings, concealed cards, dark energy, natural lightning, uh, <clears throat> energy switch. Well, I'm never getting access to the Greninja play. Let's just put this here. I could have taken both darks from here, but maybe having the energy split makes more sense. I should definitely save the dark patch because they're going to go after, they're going to, they should go after my moon here, right? Well, no, but then I could boss hands. I don't know. Maybe they won't go after my moon here, actually. I just hold the hand, though, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I don't think I actually play any of this. Well, honestly, the Ultra Balls aren't that good. <clears throat> There's no energy left in the deck, right? But if I get Super Rod plus Vessel... The Ultra Balls are pretty mid at this point. They do clear out the hand for the Mew, but most of my deck is playable at this point. Um, I'm just going to amp them. I think I'm just going to amp them. I kind of want the third water, though, because, like, I want... The Greninja threat, I feel like we want to be able to abuse aggressively for sure. Yeah. All right, the, the, the Dire Flame Wings has been pretty... Like, the constant energy acceleration is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I think I would want... Oh, one Lightning? Well, no, but this is the same thing. I guess you have less of a chance of prizing... Well, you have such a higher chance of prizing a Water at two, and if you prize one, you can't use the attack compared to your one, compared to your one Lightning. I guess I could see that. Um, I don't hate that. I guess we could do a 3-1... No, but I like the second lightning for I like the second lightning for the Thornton play because otherwise we can't threaten Thornton. 
I could super rod the... That was, like, such a bigger ask, though. Oh, I shouldn't have actually attached this lightning to play with the Thornton play, right? Well, the Thornton play is probably not happening in this game, to be honest. Thornton hints isn't going to happen in this situation, I don't think. But yeah, trying to keep around the other lane would be nice. Um. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll work, we'll work on the list, obviously, some more for sure. There's more to do. There's more to do. More to be done. Honestly, I maybe could have Dark Pat. Well, no, they could Counter Catcher. Yeah, I don't want to be too aggressive here. I'm about to, like, kind of chill a little bit. Just chill a little bit. Okay, the Mander. They have access to... Yeah, if they don't have access to the Island this turn, I'm pretty sure the game just ends. But let's see what they got. We'll let them cook. They do have the Counter Catcher. That is annoying. That's what I was talking about. I don't like the... That's why I should have, like, moved both energy off the Roaring Moon, probably. Should move both energy off the Roaring Moon. This is a boss target later. The Rotom being a boss target later for this, though, is really nice. Actually, the, anything's a boss target for hands later. I do only play one boss, but I can aggressively thin on my deck with stop. <clears throat> I do have the four seal stone as well, but they do play vacuum. Where are their vacuums at? I have both vacuums left, so I probably hold four seal stone as an out. I probably don't play it aggressively. But I have Luminion for boss as well. Damn, we just... I think we're cooking. I think we're cooking. Oh, we do get kind of... Oh, but they can't steady fire breathing us, because if they steady fire breathing us, then we win with hands. That's dope. <laughs> That's super dope. Uh, yeah, that's definitely super dope. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That's good. That's good. Boss hands hold rope. No, we definitely just go moon KO Charizard here. Because moon's like our... Yeah, they, they can't answer the moon with the Charmander. So we just go moon KO Charizard here for sure. That's 100% the player. Because they have to, like, create another Charizard. And if they go to create another Charizard, they might not be able to also Iano us. So then we just always win. Um, this is where it would be nice. Like, I, I kind of wish they had kept my hands here because I could set up double moon. But in the, in the same reason, though, the same thing with that. They, the, then they can steady fire breathing us. So, oh, that's a vacuum burn. That's like tempts me to put the forest seals on in play, but probably not going to happen. They're probably going to bump my stop. Yeah. Makes sense. So, I guess keeping Ultra Balls around in this situation makes a lot of sense because the Ultra Balls become out. Ultra Balls become out to Minion. That's why it comes out to next, the last Roaring Moon as well. Which means I kind of want to keep my nest ball. The earthen vessel can probably go. I could also burn like the switch card that out of the deck. I can't burn the escape rope, unfortunately. I can go moon, sada, dark patch, attach, right? Yeah. Moon, sada, draw three. I'll pad. We definitely rip the stop. Then we pal pad back in whatever we mill. Stop. Okay. The vessel does not seem very good anymore because I'm out of energy, so we can like vessel away this. Oh, I could have played the super rod first, actually. I could have super rod energy back. I could still super rod energy back. No, but I can't because I have to attach. I can still super rod energy, but I should have gone like, yeah, I could have done that differently, actually. I don't want another Roaring Moon in my deck. I don't want the super rod, so I just want energy back in my deck. Well, but I can't put energy back in my deck. Well, no, I could actually. My Iron Hands kind of has all my energy. But I like my Iron Hands and my energy. Hmm, interesting. Um, what I mill here? Do I even want a Palpad Sada's back? Not really even, right? I feel like I should go... I could use this, but I... F well, I could use this now. Because they don't take a knock on I'm winning, but if they do, okay. I go... Energy switch into this. I might want another Moon. I don't want Escape Rope. I could like go like this and out those two. Not things I really want to draw into. I have a boss of Sada and a Thornton. I don't think I need to pal pad here because Sada is like not the only thing I want. Um, I should use this so I could use it again next turn. Once again, if they don't take a knockout, I just win. Four Seal Stone attaching to the Mulch. Oh, I should have Ultra Ball away this. That's what I was going to Ultra Ball. Oh, wait, but I could Ultra Ball away these two. That's fine. And then I can Super Rod a Roaring Moon back. Roaring Moon, and that's it. Okay, and then restart for one. Sure, why not? Okay. But then I use both Ultra Balls, and I don't can't draw to Ultra Balls off of restart. But maybe that's fine. I don't know if that actually matters, to be honest. Does that matter? Probably not. Um, why do we card instead of just retreating? Just a burn? Yeah, I just wanted to burn it. We don't want it anymore. It doesn't do anything. Like, the, it just does nothing. <clears throat> the only thing it would do would, like, what would it do? Nothing, right? Just does nothing, yeah. Literally just does nothing. <laughs> yeah. We just chill. Yeah, definitely using pal pad there would have been bad. Because, like, more Sada's is bad. I wonder if they realize they just lose the hands here. If they, I'm not saying they're attacking with Charmander, but they push the Charmander. 
I mean, she always push up Pidgey because I got free retreat, of course, but. Um, yeah. Chill. We chill. Yo, what's up, mad guy? How's it feeling? I mean, this is only like our third game, but so far, so far, it's feeling pretty good, to be honest, for only the third game. I think I didn't put the four seal sun in play. They did have another vacuum left, so I was like, eh, I don't really want to put this in play for it just to get backed. But I don't hate the idea of attaching this, to be honest. Um, I, I want to hold it here because I they have second vacuum left. Now, will they be able to find Iono plus second vacuum? That's kind of the question. The question is, can they find Iono plus second vacuum? And I don't know, to be honest. I don't know if they can find Iono plus second vacuum, but I think playing around it like this is probably correct. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to cut Luminian. We're going to cut Luminian for sure. There's a counter catcher. Ooh, I guess they could go after my hands. Because this thing can't frenzy gouging. I could win with boss on Rody though. Yeah. They can still I own me though. They can still I own me. Yeah, I win with boss on Rody. They could vacuum the stadium though. Hmm. That would have been like a reason to put the four seal stone in play, because then they can't vacuum the stadium and my four seal stone. Minus one Luminium plus one Pokegear. Yeah, something like that. Because the the pivot of this seems too important. Plus a little bit of draw power. Loving it. Billy gets used very often turn one. And then this thing being in play has been super sick. This has been like insanely good to have in play. Um, having this in play has been super sick. Hands ends up in play. Well, I think the, the game... But the games where we don't put hands in play, we're going to want double roar and moon in play, right? So that's the thing. We've wanted hands in play every game we've played so far. But the games where we don't want hands in play, we're going to want double roar and moon. So then... We still just don't have bench space for Luminian ever. Like, and we don't want bench space for Luminian. We'd rather just be able to get through our deck more aggressively. We'd rather be able to get through our deck more aggressively. <clears throat> rather be able to get through our deck more aggressively without having to put Luminian in play. So I think just not playing Luminian is probably the way to go. Um, we're going to be the two best decks after rotation. Ask me in three months. They got the squad loaded up. They did go with the Charizard, which is correct. I was really actually curious there for a second. Do they have the Iono? The big question is, do they have the Iono? Because I literally just went if they don't have Iono. Ultra Ball for Luminium for Iono. All right, very cool, very cool. If Luminium is in play, things are going poorly. I don't agree with that, Day Camp. It would just be, we didn't draw into Asada. So the way to get our Asada was the Luminium. But I don't think things are... Wait, did they already play a supporter? They must have, right? Or did they not? What'd they get there? I trolling? Was that not Luminian? I swear that was Luminian. Maybe I'm trolling. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't? I don't know. Oh, wait. What am I even getting here? There's not a stadium in play. What's left on my deck? Oh, there's a stop. I guess there's multiple. I can get him with the Thority win, though. We got to get him with the Thority win, right? Gotta be a Thornton dub. Nah, it's Thornton dub every time. Y'all are trolling with this boss Moltres. That's how this card works, right? How does this card work? Broken. Always the Thornton dub. Yeah, I literally like was literally just blanked there for a second to be honest. I was like, wait, how the heck can we win this game? I was like, <laughs> I was like, how do we win this game? <laughs> For, I thought the stadium was going to be in play, but they did the smart play and they vacuumed it away. So I like, I froze for a second. I was like, wait, what the heck? 